Hello, and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. We're delighted to have you with us today. Our organist for this concert is Andrew Unsworth, and I'm your host, Luke Howard. We begin with a work that has a long history of introducing musical performances. It's the Prelude to Te Deum, originally composed by Marc-Antoine Charpentier in the late 17th century to commemorate a French victory at the Battle of Steenkerke. Lost for more than 200 years, this music was rediscovered in 1953 and almost immediately became the theme music for the Eurovision Song Contest. We'll hear it today in an arrangement by the London-based organist Christopher Morris. Although Sir William Walton is regarded as one of the best English composers of orchestral music in the 20th century, writing music did not always come easily to him. Walton struggled sometimes with a lack of confidence and periodically experienced difficulty concentrating on the musical task at hand. And yet today he's known for finely crafted and nuanced works, music of dramatic accessibility, such as the oratorio Belshazzar's Feast, a splendid viola concerto, the first symphony, and coronation anthems for both King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II. These are the kinds of works for which serious concert composers like to be remembered. But Walton often wondered if his conservative musical style still had a place in the modern music world. Even in the 1930s, the young Benjamin Britten was already beginning to eclipse the older Walton in innovation and reputation. For concert composers like Walton, dabbling in film soundtracks was usually regarded as a step down from the concert platform or the opera stage, a lesser genre of composition. Many of Walton's colleagues, including Ray Fawn Williams and even Benjamin Britten, also scored films in the 1930s and 40s. But for Walton, writing for films wasn't just a side gig. It was essential to helping him overcome his compositional writer's block. Walton wrote film scores for 14 major film projects, the most significant of which were Shakespearean collaborations with Sir Laurence Olivier. Although he was occasionally dismissive of his film scores, William Walton later came to realize that working in film with its built-in dramatic narrative gave him a lot of fluency 
and helped his concentration in other musical projects. Sometimes, like Walton, we might also wonder if we have what it takes to succeed, or if we're out of place, outmoded, unfashionable, uninspired. It's easy to feel behind the curve these days, professionally, socially, financially, even spiritually. But as Sir William Walton discovered, there's no shame in returning periodically to the things you know how to do well, revisiting the basics, doubting your self-doubts instead of indulging them, and regrouping. Even though it may not bring as much prestige and recognition, taking time to renew our bodies, minds, and spirits helps us center ourselves again and regain confidence in our ability to move ahead and onward. I've talked for a few minutes now as introduction to a work that lasts only a little more than one minute. It's an organ arrangement by Robert Gower of the Scherzetto from William Walton's score for the 1955 movie Richard III, one of his collaborations with Laurence Olivier. After the Scherzetto, Andrew will play his own arrangement of the traditional hymn Come, Come Ye Saints, a regular feature on this program.
The old American folk song, Shenandoah, was a popular sea shanty in the late 19th century. Now that term, shanty, is of relatively recent derivation, most likely from the second half of the 19th century, and probably comes from both the English chant and the French chante, meaning to sing. The song, Shenandoah, likely originated near the present-day U.S.-Canadian border and traveled down the Missouri and Mississippi rivers with the flatboatmen and was eventually picked up by stevedores and sailors in American port cities. And so, Shenandoah becomes a sea chanty or shanty. Andrew plays that well-known folk melody now in his own arrangement for organ. And then he'll conclude his program with the magnificent Prélude et Fugue sous le nom d'Alain by Maurice Duruflé. And this work, written in 1942, is a tribute to Duruflé's colleague and friend, the very promising French composer Jean Alain, who was killed in action during World War II at the tragically young age of 29. Duruflé used a simple cipher to turn Alain's surname into musical notes, producing the opening motifs of both the prelude and the fugue. The notes are A, D, A, A, F, the notes of the D minor triad. Durufle also included in the prelude direct quotations from Jean Alain's most famous work, The Litanies, for organ. Shenandoah, and then Durufle's prelude and fugue on the name Alain.
we're so glad you joined us for this episode of Piping Up, featuring organist Andrew Unsworth. Thank you for watching. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org. <laughs>